Hey guys, welcome back to Home Build, and this week I am finally going to sort out this windscreen. Alright, so as you can see, the windscreen is back out, and this week I actually had a guy come in, an expert, to come in to replace the windscreen, and after a couple of hours of stuffing around, we, uh, we came to the conclusion and realized he was in the exact same spot as I was and he couldn't get the bit of rubber in just here. So we pulled the rubber back off and did what we should have done from the first place, is actually sat the windscreen in without the rubber in it, just to see how well it seals all the way around. And what we've, uh, uh, what we've realized is that this little lip, just this section about here to here, is actually dips a little bit low. And when you put the windscreen on, you can actually see there's a bit of a gap along this edge, it doesn't sit flat in there. So obviously what's happened, when the car was previously repaired, it, um, it obviously was not re repaired properly and this lip was knocked a bit low. So what I now have to do is peel this off and try and panel beat this up without damaging the paint um, and, uh, and get it back into the right shape so that the windscreen will fit. So it wasn't what I was doing, we were doing it right and we got it to the exact same point as he did, it was just that the frame wasn't straight so now i am going to get this frame straight and um, even if it goes as far as wrecking the paint which i really don't want to do it's no good to me if i can't get the windscreen in there was a windscreen in when i got it i never paid any attention to it you know i was pulling the whole car apart anyway and i never drove it so um i'm gonna sort it out okay so here's my new windscreen and my idea to try and get that lip back into the right shape is I'm going to make a template off of the curve of this edge of the windscreen that I can then take backwards and forwards over to my lip and panel beat it back to the right shape. hard to hold this and uh, and show you but uh, you can see the gap here how low this area is sitting where the windscreen's supposed to go so I need to beat that back up into shape because that sitting down so far meant that the rubber was stretching to try and get over that lip and it kept flicking back so that's my issue so I have to go back now and panel beat that out it's flat So I've made another template and I, uh, I needed something a little bit more robust so I made it out of a thicker piece of cardboard and um, I've stuck the headliner back on so you can't see it very well but that is a much much better fit now now that I've put it back into place uh, panel beat it back up so fingers crossed this time I can uh, get Mrs Jeff to give me a hand and we will finally get this window in Alright, I've just got the rubber back on the outside of this windscreen using a bit of WD-40 and um, I've got these chrome strips now. Lots of people were talking to me and telling me that you should put the chrome strips on afterwards and that's what I always believed but um, I've seen lots of people do it with them before and even when the, uh, the windscreening guy came, he would put them in afterwards but he got to the same stage as we did with just as much trouble as we did and we had them in already, and they're going to be a real nightmare to put in afterwards. They are a real pig to put in beforehand. They're going to be a super pig to put in afterwards. So I know it works with them beforehand, and it's a hell of a lot easier putting them in now. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, another couple of little tips I got from the windscreen installer is uh, for starters, for putting the rope in, if you get yourself a, um, an old silicon nozzle with a nice big cut in the end of it, it makes it a heap easier getting, it, uh, getting the 
the rope into the crack because you just sort of stick the nozzle end in and then just run along and a bit of WD-40 doesn't go astray. Another little tip is he left a loop at the top. So this means that you can actually come back and start in the middle at the top as well um, if you need to. So the main parts start at the bottom, but if you've got this loop at the top, it just gives you that extra little bit of um, adjustability. All right, and that is the window all prepped up, ready to get Mrs. Jeff to give me a hand to put it in. So that means I've got to get back onto uh, sewing up some carpet edging. So I've just spent that time putting the floor mats back in and trimming them to shape. Because of the extra thicknesses of the sound deadening and everything, the original shapes were too tight and it was uh, these carpets were folding up the edges a bit too much because obviously there's extra thickness under there. So now I've trimmed them, I've got them just to the right shape. So now I need to take them out and start doing the edging on the floor pieces of the carpet. As you can see the carpet is coming together only little issues that I've got to still sort out is this piece here it just sits there I've got to come up with a way to actually pin it down because it just flops around and uh, I imagine when I accelerate and stuff it's not going to sort of sit where it's supposed to the only other thing is um, I've now got to come up with some floor mats and I'm going to take these carpets out and use them as a template and make up some floor mats Okay, so now I've done all the binding around the edges of my floor mats. The next job is to put the heel pad into it. So uh, now I have to work out how I'm going to trim the edges nicely and make it a nice neat pattern and then um, sew it down. Okay, and that's all done. It's not the most beautiful uh, floor mats I've ever seen, but um, They'll do the job. I've actually ordered some clips online because there's nothing worse than formats that slide around while you're using them. Carpets are done. All right, so with carpets done, the next thing to move on to is the cast area. So I have, I actually ordered this quite a while ago. It's taken a long time to get here, but, um, but it's here. And um, first of all, I have to put it together because it's not like your usual head unit. Wait a minute. This was what was in the car before. Probably wasn't too bad a head unit in its day. It's a uh, Pioneer CD player. Does not go with this car at all. It's not going back in. Uh, it's now pretty much a paperweight. So this one is not like this. It has to be assembled. So um, first things first, let's start putting it together. And Okay, so this is the face plate that comes with the stereo and it comes with these two little black uh, pieces. Depending on what your choices are, there's lots of choices of colors and bits and pieces, so they sort of obviously mix and match to whatever your preference is. These are not drilled, so I measured the center and then drilled them in the center of them. You install this into the dash from the back. This goes over the top. Then you got your choice of knobs, etc. So these, these are my knobs that will have that that is what i think is a uh, a nice suitable looking face for a stereo in my early 70s porsche i think it's a um, quite a a decent look so now i need to work out how i'm going to mount it in from the back and i put it in there a second ago and it's a bit of a 
difficult thing to fit uh, to get it just right. What I'm actually thinking is I've gone and uh, from my old stereo, I've got this mounting tray and what I'm thinking is I can actually bend these side brackets back so then it will fit inside this mounting tray and uh, be relatively easy to put in and out. Well, that's my hope anyway. All right, so that is the stereo head unit installed and this thing, it looks retro, but it's got uh, Bluetooth hands-free and all the rest of the bits and pieces you'd, you'd want in a, uh, in a current stereo, but it sort of looks the part for this dash. I've still got to fix up this, these heater cables and stuff, that's still yet to be done. And I'll have to wire this in next week, but uh, I think it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, the Porsche 906 or Carrera 6 was the last legal street racing car from Porsche. It was announced in 1966 and 50 were made to meet the homologation requirements. You might know of the battle between Ford and Ferrari in the 60s and unfortunately the 906's introduction to Le Mans in 1966 was the same year that Ford was able to break Ferrari's six year winning streak. What you may not know is in the 1966 24 hour Le Mans uh, the Porsche 906 actually placed 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th behind the three GT40s. So actually beating all the Ferraris as well. It's time again for mail time, and this week I've got a letter from Beavers Motorsport. Looks like uh, Victoria. Jeff, thoroughly enjoying the build. Be sure to get in touch when you're ready for an MX-5. This is uh, Beavers Motorsport. I've had a look at some of his stuff. He does a lot of aero stuff, MX-5s. Very, uh, very cool. Lots of track-focused uh, builds there on MX-5. So, um, be Beavers on YouTube. Thank you very much. I've got a few stickers here. All right, thanks, Brendan. As always, if you want to send anything to Mail Time, uh, send it to PO Box 1520, Barrel, New South Wales 2576, Australia. All right, all right, guys. It's a bit better, but not a lot. The windscreen is still not in. The trim keeps popping out. I might try and pull the trim out and do it with the trim out. The trouble is. Getting the trim in afterwards is going to be an absolute nightmare of a job. I don't even, I have no idea how to do it. I've tried to even just pop the stuff back in while it's there, the stuff that's popped out. And I can't even get that bit back in. I have no idea how it's going to work. But uh, anyway, that's it for uh, another week. As always, if you're enjoying this, the uh, videos, please like and subscribe to my channel, Home Built by Jeff. And you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the same place. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> so the GT40s are Fords. Yes. Okay. Okay. Will our viewers know that too? Because yes, I didn't know that. Answer. Answer. Okay. Alright. They know, they know what the duty 40 is. Uh, what you may not know is that the... the, the <laughs>